Good afternoon, everybody in COA world. My name is Carolyn Carger, and you are joining us for the second edition of Maturing with COA. And today we are really lucky to have a conversation with a very special person at COA, and her name is Amy Robinson. Hi, Amy. Hi, Carolyn. Thank you so much for joining us today, Amy. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, Amy is the volunteer coordinator for COA. And um, so she is the lovely person who you will meet if you inquire at COA about volunteering. And that's, uh, volunteers are very important to COA. Um, so Amy is the person who will sit down with you and discuss what you would, what you have in mind with volunteering with COA and find out what skills and, and what experiences you want to have there. So, um, so Amy, would you mind explaining to everybody um, what role volunteers play at Council on Aging? Absolutely. They, they are so vital to what we do. And often we say that word, um, people are vital to, to the organization, but our volunteers are what make things happen. Um, we're a nonprofit organization, as you know, and there's no way that we could pay staff to do everything that needs to be done for the seniors in St. John's County. And that's where our volunteers step in. They come here, they, they do whatever needs to be done throughout the county to make the mission of Council on Aging happen. So without them partnering with our wonderful staff, we just could not offer the scope of services that we do. And um, we are just so grateful. They're very important, very important. Absolutely. Can you can you talk about what are some good reasons to consider volunteering for COA? Sure, I think um, if you just don't know what you might want to do, like you have a void in your day and you're bored. Um, Council on Aging is a great place to volunteer. And if volunteering is great in general, um, we would love to have volunteers volunteer with us, but there are other places in the county too. Um, so, volunteering is vital to this maturing and aging process and growing. But, um, but yeah, I just, how they would get started, remind me where we were going, I got off track. We were just saying like good reasons why people volunteer with COA. Right, reasons, they, they are, um, they want something to do, they want to give back. They're um, maybe, um, just wanting to belong somewhere. We offer community and a family here, so. And, and I would imagine that sometimes, and I'm sure I've met some volunteers whose family members have benefited mm -hmm. from COA's services. I would think that you probably get a fair share of people who, whose family has been helped by COA. Right, yes, or yeah. Absolutely. Or they've been touched. Maybe they weren't in this area and they've moved here, but they've been, they have a loved one who needed something. So they've seen that need. And even if they come here and they see that we help to meet those needs. So great. So would you say you have a, a high percentage of retired people coming in to help at CIA? Yes. There, there are several, um, probably the majority, 70% or so of our volunteers are retired. Um, okay. but, but we do That's have- a high percentage. Yes, yeah. I would say at least 70%. So I think the idea of retirement kind of is a good topic for us to talk about on this particular show, which is called Maturing mm -hmm. with COA because the idea behind these conversations is that um, yes, people are aging 
and time is passing. So we are getting older, um, but that's not all we're doing. We're, st we're still growing at every age and that can be called maturing. So it's mm -hmm. a growth process as opposed to just a um, sort of a wearing out process. So <laughs> now I, I wanted to share with you that um, I remember when my dad retired, my father-in-law, when he heard about it, told me, he said, so your dad's retiring? I said, yeah. He said, tell him retirement stinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So retirement, you know, is a concept and it means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. And for some people, like technically the word means retiring, retiring from what? Retiring from your paid employment or your business, um, retirement from the public or mm -hmm. retirement from the community, you know, what exactly, I guess it means different things to different people. But I think um, what we find at COA is that we get a fair amount of people coming in who, you know, have achieved that state of retirement and um, are wondering, is that all there is? Mm. So um, what's your experience with people, people coming in as volunteers? I think that's, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Um, I think that a lot of people retire and from, from work, but it's then that opportunity to start giving back um, and they look forward to it and they want to help those who are less fortunate or those who have need. And we offer so many services and, and I love Council on Aging because um, there are so many things. So regardless of your background, what you've done in the past, there is something that you can find that's fulfilling here. And I, I tell volunteers when they start the process, you know, these are the different things that we offer. And if this particular opportunity is not fulfilling with you, try it for a couple of weeks, but let's find you where you're gonna be fulfilled, where you're gonna grow personally, where you're going to thrive. Because people who are thriving in how they're giving are, are really pouring beautiful life into the clients that we serve. So it's, it's all about finding that perfect sweet spot for someone to, really connect and really feel fulfilled in their giving. Yeah. And, and I would imagine too, you know, people who are at retirement age have tremendous skills and experience. Mm. So these are all really valuable resources that can help seniors who need help um, mm. and also bring a lot of fulfillment to the volunteers who now have the time at their right. disposal to offer them to people who are in need. Right. So that's really great. And, and sometimes in your work, you've worked, but you have to do what your employer says. And here you have the opportunity to give where your passions are. And that's so fulfilling to, to have more of a say on how you give and what you do with your time. And it's good for people to know that you're sensitive to that. Mm, absolutely. That you want them to feel fulfilled and to enjoy mm. what they're doing. So mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. So what is the process in, in, in learning about these opportunities and getting to know COA? So the first step is just contacting me and asking me about volunteering and um, what opportunities we have and and those change from time to time as as roles open and programs create and and various things but um so they contact me and um you can do that by calling our main number that's 209-3700 um or going on our website and in the top right-hand corner on our website, coasjc.org, 
there's a tab that says get involved. And if they click that get involved, that goes to donate volunteer. And um, clicking there, they'll be able to get my contact information or email me. And so, so contact me and then I send a volunteer application. And once I receive someone's volunteer application, then I interview them. Right now we're doing interviews over the phone because of COVID, but, um, but usually that would be an in-person um, interview and, and a tour where I just show all the different opportunities that we have. And then we just talk like you and I are talking right now and, and um, find out what they might want to do after they get to see it in action, so. So that's terrific. And, and what have volunteers been doing right now? So people have an idea of the scope of, of the roles that volunteers can play. So right Just now, um, the biggest thing that we've had going on is Meals on Wheels. And a lot of people are really familiar with that. Uh, our participants, clients receive a nutritionally balanced meal. Um, the volunteers deliver that. In with that is a built-in wellness check. So that senior is getting just a little bit of socialization, a wellness check, um, and their meal. And so we have those that happens all over St. John's County. So if you live in the Trout Creek area or up in Ponte Vedra or out in Hastings, um, or here in St. Augustine, we have um, clients who receive those meals. So we can connect you with, with a route in your area. And so those volunteers have been phenomenal through all of our changes and protocols and things like that. And we just so appreciate how much those volunteers have done and how they've stepped up. And, um, and I could use a few more in the Fruit Cove area and um, Hastings and Ponte Vedra. We're right. always looking for volunteers out in those areas. We are delivering less often. We're delivering Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I'm not needing as many volunteers right in town, um, but the outlying areas, uh, I need folks who are, who are interested there. And then River House Presents, that's been kind of new and you've been really involved in getting that going, but um, that's our, our online classes and volunteers have been have been videoing classes and various programs to go up on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And so um, we really just appreciate what they've done so with much. that. Mm -hmm. So let me just let me just jump in for one second just to make sure everyone knows that um, COA has five senior centers and one mm -hmm. of them is called River House if you're new to the area. River House is on Marine Street and um, it's on the um, Matanzas River. And um, it is our senior center, um, lifelong learning center. So normally in the days before COVID, that would be a place where you could go um, and learn lots of interesting things. You could decide that you wanna learn a new language. You could learn how to draw or paint dance, there were dance classes. Um, so since COVID, we have, we have asked our instructors to help the seniors in St. John's County by creating some video courses for them. So um, if you go to COA's YouTube channel, you will see our collection, which is growing, of videos that you can participate with anytime. And it's been really lovely because a lot of these instructors who are used to being paid to teach their classes have volunteered to create some of these online resources for people in St. John's County to be able to stay active and engaged and just have something to do, especially at the beginning of COVID when people were spending a lot more time at home. 
-hmm. So that, that's really great. And we are still looking for, so if you have a, a talent or you have a hobby that you want to share, please get in touch with me. Um, please get in touch with me. And, and if you're interested in making a video, we'd love to talk to you about it. If you're one of the, the instructors. Yes, absolutely. So what else? So volunteers, I've, I have a few volunteers that are working with our prescription assistance program. And that program is just amazing. So seniors in St. John's County um, who make five times the federal poverty limit can come to Council on Aging. Um, they can call the number and the main number and get connected with that program. And that program helps to sign seniors up for all the drug companies discount programs. So they can receive their prescription drugs at no or discounted cost. And last year it was over, I think two and a half million dollars that we saved St. John's County seniors. That's um, amazing. Yes, so volunteers are still working with that program right now. Um, and we're so grateful for them. And then we still have our cutters and clippers who are going out weekly to um, maintain lawns. Sometimes uh, seniors, the only thing they need to remain independent in their homes is lawn care. They can't do it themselves due to health and they can't afford perhaps a lawn care service. And so, um, we have a team of volunteers who go out every Thursday and take care of these lawns on the list. And, um, you know, what an amazing vital role that is. And so they're still out there weekly doing that in the mornings on Thursday mornings and um, so grateful for them. Well, that's great. And they're a part of our Care Connection program. Mm -hmm which I think is really special because it's 100% uh, funded by donations. Mm -hmm. and It's almost 100% run and operated mm -hmm. by volunteers. So this is a program that fills needs that there is no funding for. So if you need help putting a light bulb in or fixing mm -hmm. a hole in your floor, like minor repairs or if you find yourself in a wheelchair and you have, there are people who cannot get in and out of their houses without someone carrying them. Right. You mm -hmm. can't afford to have a, a ramp built. We have volunteers and we have donors who will, you know, donate the money necessary and teams that will come out and build ramps. And I don't know if that's happening now during COVID yet. Is that, is that back in operation? I, I've not spoken with the person who helps to um, organize that for us. I think that it's gonna start again in October, um, but I don't have complete confirmation. They typically take summer off because of the heat. Heat, yes, yes, okay, yeah. So, but just so people know that that's a really, really great program, Care Connection. And we, we actually, every year we have a fundraiser for Care Connection to pay for the program and keep it operating and providing all these services that help seniors maintain their independence. And um, the annual fundraiser is called Christmas on the River. Mm -hmm. And it's a great sort of holiday celebration, which we hold at River House, which I just talked about, which is our lifelong mm -hmm. learning center. And this year, because of COVID, we are not able to have Christmas on the River so what we're gonna have is a virtual Christmas on the river where we're inviting people to donate their ticket price or make other donations to help keep this wonderful program afloat. Right. And, um, so people will be hearing about that as we get closer to that. That's normally held. Um, it's normally held, I think, right after Thanksgiving or before, somewhere around Thanksgiving is when we usually hold that event, but we'll talk about that later. But Care Connection, which is fueled really 100% by volunteers in our community, mm -hmm. people who have stepped up to, to, to do this work for, for seniors. So we'll have more information about that yes. as, we, as we approach it. Um, 
So that makes me wonder, you know, do you have any specific volunteer ne needs right now, Amy? That you'd like we to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I talked just a little bit about, we have some needs for Meals on Wheels in the outlying area. And then you, you talked about River House Presents and if people would like to, to do a video about their hobby or passion or whatever, just to share, teach people how to get started in it. Um, we would love to have them. Um, we have this new virtual opportunity and correct me if I'm wrong, it's, I think it, we're calling it sunshine activity time. Yeah. It, it's our normal. Sunshine, yeah, sunshine activities and caregiver cafe. Okay. So this is a program that serves um, really um, people who have dementia problems and um, maybe brain injuries who used to come in person to COA Sunshine Center before mm -hmm. COVID required us to close down the facility. So now Paulette, who is the manager of, of the Sunshine Center and also the caregiver support programs, she's created a virtual class and I believe they meet three times a week. Right, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And so we need a, we need a behind the scenes host, somebody who will get on the session on Zoom and um, you don't have to do all three days. It's um, once a week is great and you'll help pull up screens that Paulette needs and just various different things to help her stay focused on the content rather than trying to pull all of this information up and then to watch the comments and and direct Paulette's attention if someone needs her attention or things like that. So um, so she, if you have a, a weekday morning, a when, Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning and you're computer savvy, it's great if you already are familiar with Zoom, but it's not too difficult to learn. Um, so, so if that doesn't intimidate you and you'd like to be a part of that, um, then we have those openings. A lot of people might have ideas that we've not thought about. Care Connection was originally the mastermind of volunteers. So that whole program started because volunteers said, hey, why don't we do something here? So, so ideas that, that you may have, I would love to hear them because if we can start something that fits our mission and would help seniors right now in COVID and the pandemic, we would love to do that. And so we're open to your ideas. Um, another thing, if, if you can't volunteer right now and we are a nonprofit and a lot of our other funding for the in-person services, we're not receiving that right now. So, we would love to have you join our elder guard and um, become a monthly donor. And, and then if you would just, we would love to have people who would share that opportunity with others. If you talk about what COA has meant to you and we would just spread the word and help us get the word out that that we have this new elder guard and they can be a part of it and join with us in the mission. And um, we just we just love to have anybody who wants to be on our team on the team. That's great. And we need, we need help and we need, it mm -hmm. takes a whole community to provide these services. And I like to say that our Council on Aging in St. John's County, we are the Cadillac of mm -hmm. Council on Aging, because in many other counties, um, I know this from personal family experience, when you have a, a, a senior family member that you need to find services for, you are kind of on your own. So, mm -hmm. you know, you may have to go to four or five different agencies to try and find them help and get them qualified to receive the help. But we are really, really fortunate and, and grateful to all the people who created our St. John's County Council on Aging mm -hmm. um, because 
really, you can call our number and we have actually um, case managers who you can speak to who will help you help your family member or help yourself. They know all the resources that are available. They know all the hoops that need to be jumped through. And, and we offer so many services ourselves all in one place that mm -hmm. we're super fortunate to live in this community and have the help that we do. So we're really grateful to everybody out there who's watching. And that just reminds me that I always want to mention, thank you to our donors. Thank you mm -hmm. to our new members of Elder Guard, which was created really with the idea that there are many of our volunteers and our supporters who cannot participate at this particular moment. Maybe they have, maybe they're seniors, maybe they have health conditions where they're nervous about interacting with the public. So we created the Elder Guard because um, it's a great way for people to get involved and, and it, it's not necessary to give a, a large sum of money. It, it, can, it can be a monthly donation if you'd like to do that. And it adds up over time and it will help us meet these current needs that we've never had before because of COVID to come up with some virtual solutions to um, getting seniors and caregivers the help and support that they need. So thank you to everybody. We've had a really great response to Elder Guard. Thank you for joining. And also thank you to our caring partners. So we have partners in the community who have taken a bigger role in helping us to be there for the seniors and the caregivers in our county. So I would just like to give a thank you to our caring partners this year. We have Christ's Episcopal Church at Serenata Beach Club. They have stepped up to be a caring partner for us this year. We have Endless Summer Realty, which is a real estate company in St. John's County. And we have Flagler Health Plus, which is how we refer to Flagler Hospital now. Um, we have Island Doctors, um, which is a um, medical practice in St. John's County. And we have Republic Services, uh, which is a company who helps to um, support transportation for seniors um, related to our senior center in Ponte Vedra. So thank you to all of our caring partners. Yeah. Couldn't do it without you. Yeah. And if you happen to um, come in contact with any of our caring partners, please thank them. Absolutely. I think it would, they would love to hear that you appreciate that they are being there for seniors in St. John's County with us. I agree. So, um, yeah, so my last question for you, I think, is a question that I'm asking everybody, which is in your case, Amy, since you're so young, <laughs> I can ask you both questions, but mm -hmm. I would like to ask you, if you could go back in time, since we're talking about maturing mm -hmm. and the ways that we evolve and the things that we learn, the more time we spend on the planet, if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice in life, what would you tell yourself at 18 years old? Mm. I, I'm not sure, I think you know, and I'm not sure how many people are aware, I, I got the privilege to care for my parents. Um, they were in their 60s and started to suffer from, from different health problems and, and they required some 24 hour care. And um, so I got to take care of them for three years in my home. Oh, wow. And um, when that happened, I was trying to make all these decisions. And I'm somebody who, who really frets about doing everything right and making the right decisions and, and not messing up, not making any mistakes. And so I was really struggling with how to make these decisions. And my husband said to me, I, I said, what am I gonna do? What if, I, what if I make the wrong decision? And he said, he said, make the best decision that you can right now. And if things change or you don't like how it's working, change your mind. And I think that's what I would tell myself at 18 that there are gonna be a lot of things that you think are right right now. And you're gonna feel like you made the wrong decision and maybe, maybe 
you even feel like you failed or you really messed up. And that's okay. You didn't really fail. Um, you just can change your mind. And, and I think that's, I would like to think that that's gonna be true the rest of my life. If I don't like how something's going, I can make a brand new decision, so. That's great advice, really great advice. And if we have any 18 year olds out there, mm. you just received the benefit <laughs> of Amy's experience. And I think the 18 year olds could probably benefit from that because they're dealing with some really difficult oh, choices wow. and difficult situations. Um, so it's tough right now for everyone. It really is tough for everyone. And, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure everyone knows though, that, that COA is here for you. Um, I'll just end this conversation by saying that we have two wonderful, warm, friendly, oh. funny, entertaining ladies who are our frontline representatives in the world and they are our receptionist Martha and Barb and they greet the world every day Monday through Friday from 8 a.m to 5 p.m I believe those are the hours mm -hmm. and they have made it their mission to not only help people reach the resources that they need at COA or outside of COA but they have made it their mission to make sure everyone knows that they are there for you if you want to chat, if you feel like this too much, too much lockdown, too much stress is getting to you, um, they are the people that you want to reach out to and just say hello. And they are receiving calls from people who are experiencing crises or just bored, or maybe they're not online and they would like to hear what's new, what's going on. Um, so please reach out to them. They're two of my favorite people. And um, you can reach them, Martha and Barb, at 904-209-3700. Um, we have been on a delay. We've, uh, there's, a, there's a lag between the, the um, Zoom where we're having this conversation and Facebook. So we're not able to respond to people as they type comments, but we will after this talk. Um, anyway, just wanted to leave you with that one thing. They say they are hearing from people in the community. It's very, very difficult on seniors and caregivers right now. So please don't be shy. You will thank me if you call up and have a nice little chat with them and we will interview them going in the future. And we'll hear some of their some of their stories. Wonderful. Thanks, well, Carolyn. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so, so much for um for doing this with me today. I'm so glad. Um, and I am happy for everyone who, who gets to call in and talk to Amy. Thank you to all our volunteers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day, everyone.